Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Minecraft. And in Minecraft, it plays from two to seven players, depending on what game you're playing, because Minecraft is basically a mechanical style deck or decks of cards in which you can play many different micro games. In it, you're gonna get games that are kind of like Scrabble, a little bit like Poker or Texas Hold'em. Some of them are like matching, others of them are dexterous, dexterous in ways. And it comes with this big booklet that tells you all about how the cards work and all all the different games. Some of them are team games, some of them are uh, fully competitive, uh, single player, and they all have different influences based on the different types of games you're going to be playing. Each of the cards is going to have either one of these uh, hashtag symbols or these gear symbols. These are like, these are going to be like the actions or the different things you need to re are required for you, and these ones are going to be either numbers or asterisks which are considered wild. Each of the games are kind of different in their own way in which you're going to be trying to solve for these things here, and if you can solve for them you're going to score points in them. Sometimes you'll be doing it on a grid, other times you'll be doing it on a board. It just really depends on the game and the style of it. But overall, it's basically a mechanical thing in which you could play something like Pyramids or a couple of the other games that I've had systems for in which you would play instead of tiles with cards. So let me go ahead and show you what you're going to get in Minecraft and uh, we'll talk about the different games as well. So here is Minecraft and everything included. You're going to get the box for the game as well as of course the rules and all of the different rules for each of the different games. Uh, and, and that tells you how many cards are in each of the two different decks. You have 32 cards for the specific action deck and then 72 for the number deck. Number decks range from zero to seven in all variety of different colors and come with an asterisk which is basically wild and can be played with throughout the, you know, all the different games. And then the uh, action cards are basically things that are going to have requirements on the back such as you need to have two colors uh, uh, two cards that are either yellow or blue or this one you have to have a card that's greater than three that's red or uh, yellow and this one you have to have a sum of cards that equals five so for instance a four a, th a zero and a one would work uh, equals five and there's a big uh, difference between all of them how they all function and each of the functions are all included in the rule book here it tells you how many numbers of cards you're going to need for each one what they are all called and how they kind of all function after you've gone ahead and learned the basic idea of all the different cards we'll get into the different games and how they are played. So let's come up and talk about a couple of the games. So after you've learned all the basic cards in both of the decks, then you're ready to play. You can choose among any of the games or of course even make your own because it's a game system and allows you to do that. The first one you're gonna to wanna to pop in is probably Easy Coder and it tells you how to play. You have two separate decks of cards. You draw cards from the numerical card deck, which is gonna have these different numbers. And then the player's gonna flip over one of the, the uh, action cards here and you're going to try to perform the action. If you can do so, you're going to gain it. If you can't, you pass another people get to do that as well and it goes back and forth until tell whoever can actually uh put all their cards down and secure the points the highest person of the points is going to win i'll show you about a couple of these down below as well speedy monster is basically that game but it is now made dexteriously so a uh, player will put one down everybody else is going to try and solve it as fast as they can and you can score points that way um, and then, of course, you're going to have something like Memory Flip-A-Thon, where you're going to place down these cards face down. Players are going to flip them over, try and solve them. If they can't, they go back down again. And uh, players will continue to flip these things over, trying to solve them. And as they do so, they're going to gain points. And if you can remember, there are certain ones that have been placed face down that were not able to be solved. You can try and solve for those less later, much like those memory-style games. Then you're going to look at something like Decode here, which is basically flipping four of these guys up. And then each of the players are going to have a hand of cards to try and decode as much as they possibly can. Whoever decodes the most is going to gain a certain amount of points because each of the cards not only have uh, what, they need, what they need to be as well the type, but also the top right hand corner uh, or bottom left hand corner is going to have a star and that's based on the amount of points you're going to get for scoring those cards. The person with the most points is going to win. Most of these games can be played up to a certain point of your choosing or you go through until the entire deck runs out. Uh, you've got other games in here like a Kodo Poker Match in which you're going to basically be playing poker like like uh, Texas Hold'em. You get a certain amount of cards. You make your hand you make your hand as best you can based on what is available to you and you're trying to solve for these guys here if you think you can solve more than other players you're going to bet and it's going to continue two more are going to flop down you're going to get two more cards two more are going to flop down two more are going to get more cards and then if you think you can solve the cult full equation get more points than anybody else you're going to put more and more chips in so it plays like a poker match but also uses this coding mentality uh, and then another the last game that i was looking at other than the the team league here uh was the cobble the code this is like scrabble in which you're going to have three types of each three cards of each type and you're going to be able to play them down in a scrabble type formation if it says something uh, like you know you need three red cards here you place three red cards down on that one and then your opponent can also place three red cards next to it provided he was, he was able to and maybe you can score another point as well by placing a certain thing down and you're just trying to make scrabble
Scrabble variations of, uh, um, of of these different coding cards and whatnot. It'll make more sense when I show you down below. But let's go ahead and talk about a couple of the games below and how they kind of function. Let's go ahead and get into a couple of the games for the game Minecraft. Of course, when you flip it open after you've looked at all the different cards, let's go ahead and begin with Easy Coder. It's the easiest one to start with. Every player is going to get five cards here: one, two, three, four, and five, and five cards for the other player. Here we'll play a two-player game, and after that, then it's going to be a simple game of learning how to use this uh, set of cards. Everybody knows they're going to have numbers in their hand or they're going to have an asterisk. Asterisks will not score points in most games, however. But this player will go ahead and flip over one of these guys here. This player is going to try and solve it. This guy needs to have three cards that are either red or, uh, or yellow. If he doesn't have that, it would pass to the next player. But he does, so he would take these guys here. There's three of them. He'd score this. They'd go face down. And then he'd draw up to his hand size. Then he would go ahead and flip over for this guy here. And this guy would try and solve for this one as well. It's an unknown number of cards uh, that are more than one uh, for 0, 1, 4, and 6 of blue and red. Well, there's a 6 blue, and have to use a wild here to score that one. Then, of course, he will draw once again. A very, very simple game, right? And flip over for this one here. He needs 3 blue or 3 red or any combination of the above. He doesn't have that, so he's going to pass. This player will have a chance to do it. If he can't do it, this will go to the bottom of the deck, and now he's going to get to draw for him. He now has to do this one here, which is one of these, uh, 0, 2, 4, four or six of any of the colors. He's got one right there, bam. And that's the basic idea for that game. So if we went ahead and took these away. We'll just move them aside for now and show you the next game. Speedy Coder, is a Speedy Monster now instead of Easy Coder. It's the same style game. Each player is gonna get cards in their hand, but one of the players is actually going to, so we'll be playing more, more than one. Let's see, everybody gets five cards in their hand. Okay, uh, well, one of the players, this guy, will flip over this one, and whoever can go ahead and figure it out first by flipping over one of the cards on there is going to score. So a two, three, five, or seven, people are looking in their hand, and he pulls one out. Um, oops, not these guys here. And he pulls one out, and he gets a seven, so he gets it first, which is great. And then, of course, everybody draws back up to their hand size, and the next player is going to get to go for these two, flipping one of these over, and they're going to try and speed race. Bam, he got it. So it works the same way, right? Just as uh, the uh, easy coder, but now you're adding dexterity to it as well. Now let's go look at the next one here. So next one we have here is the Memory Flipathon. This one is actually going to be interesting because you're going to have uh, 10 of these guys out. And you're going to have players uh, with hands of cards, just like normal. And they're going to flip these guys over. And they're going to try and play the cards for, uh, 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 that it requires. So this is three of red or blue. They don't have it. It goes face down again. Another player is going to try and flip one over. If he had a one, three, five, or seven of any of those, he would be able to take it. If not, it flips down again. But you're trying to score points from, from memory from these guys. If one gets removed, another one goes down. Makes sense. So now it incorporates the memory aspect of the memory game. Uh, another game is going to be decode in which every player is going to get six cards one two three four five and six one two three four five and six as well as there's going to be four of these guys that are going to pop down one two three and four and each player is going to have their own specific row um, area so they're going to try and solve each of these and score points so he's got his hand of three four three five and so here we go he needs uh two of these zero two four and six he's got a four but he doesn't have a zero two or he has two fours but you can't have the same card of uh, the same color and number on the same card so that's not going to work but he does happen to have one, two, he has three of red or blue. So these guys will go face down here, right? He's got one of these, which is a three blue. And then this has to be a, 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 a white, a yellow, or a blue that's greater than three. So that would go down. This one wouldn't work, unfortunately, so we keep this one. And uh, he can make sure they're in piles next to the rows here. And then, of course, this player is going to play over here. He's got... Let's see, he's got a wild he can put right there, which will work. He's got a seven blue, which will work there. And then... None of these will work for these guys here. He needs to have three or any number more than more than two or more than one here. So these guys would burn. Uh, then you're going to go ahead and flip these guys over, and uh, each player is going to score points. So in this case, he would score for this one, one and two, but he doesn't score for his wild. Three points here and four points here. Uh, this player here is going to score two and three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Whoever scores the highest is going to win by taking all of their winning cards and winning action cards, putting them in a pile, or removing the ones that do not win. And then, of course, the next round is going to begin. And it continues like that. So you're basically trying to decode with your hand to make the best possible hand that you can. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the Coder Poker Match. In this game, you're going to get a set of uh, four cards in your hand and your opponents are also going to get a set of four and you're also going to start with an arbitrary number of chips or tokens and then you're going to take uh, these setting cards here and flip them over and then try and see what your hand is going to be doing for you so like can I solve these two and how many points am I going to get and then this round would happen to have a bidding round aspect to it like I bid three because I think I'm going to be able to solve these and have the most points oh I can raise you and whatnot and then every player is going to get another set of four cards and after that, uh, another two of these pop down and another bidding round would happen. And then finally, uh, the last phase would be two more cards to each player and then a final card is gonna flip over. And players are going to, after bidding, reveal their hands and try and score just like they did in the last game by putting cards face down and flipping them and scoring as many points as they possibly can. Basic, uh, simple aspect, but changes the game completely. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the next one here. There's a bunch of them, right? There's a Team Coder League, and then there's Cobble the Code. This one is just like a Scrabble, in which you're going to get three of these cards here, and you're going to get uh, three of these cards here, and you're, everybody's going to get the same, right? Three and three, and then you're going to place down these cards to try and score, right? So this one here says any number equal to six, well, that's a wild and that's a six, so that's uh, at least more than one card, right? So that'll work. So he'll score three and four points, arbitrary tokens to be used for that. Then he's gonna draw up again. He's gonna get one here and two here. And then the next player is gonna get to play as well. So they've got their three cards and they've got, uh, oh no, what am I doing here? Here we go. And I got these, these three here. And I can try, I have to play off of these just like I would in Scrabble. So this says I need a green card that's greater uh, than three. That would do that, which would score me one, two, and three points. And if it's connected to another thing, it could score you more additional points. You would draw back up and continue that way, making your map as big as possible. And whoever has the most points at the end of the game, which is when the deck runs out, is going to be the winner. There is a few more games as well in here, but uh, let's go ahead and talk about these ones here. I think I showed you enough. So that was my marathon of Minecraft. Other than messing around with the decks and putting them over everywhere, you got the idea, right? It is a coding game in, in, a, in a sense, and it has rules. You have your numbers, and you have what the numbers are needed to do on the action cards, but then it's going to be incorporated with stuff like Scrabble, stuff like uh, the matching memory game, uh, dexterity games, and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff, right? The poker, it all functions and it works well together all in these different ways. And it's also cool if you like to make your own games, you can use these to make your own games because it, how it is incorporated within itself. It has enough cards to play up to seven players, depending on the game, and some of them are team games, some of them are competitive all on their own. If you like a light dexterity game, it's got that. If you like a very simple, easy to understand coding game, and it kind of also gives you an idea of why coding works and how it works, which is really nice. Uh, this is going to be a game that most people aren't going to be uh, liking if they don't like the fact that there's not a lot of artwork. This is mainly based on symbology and of course coding so it's going to be fun focusing on numbers and like patterns right recognition of the different types of cards here but if you like that aspect if you like me mechanical thinking you're going to enjoy this game it uh what's funny to me is as i was playing the first game i'm like eh, i don't really like it the, the this the code easy coder eh. but the speedy one i played i'm like oh this is actually pretty good and then it incorporated the 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 matching and i'm like oh even more interesting and oh now you can play scrabble and i'm like wow really and it worked it worked really well actually and i had a lot of fun with that as well um the poker one is pretty cool too it works just like you would think in poker i have no idea how to calculate the odds or anything like that so that's what it was like i don't, I don't know but it, it seemed fun i enjoyed that aspect of it and i got to know all the different cards there were a couple that were kind of confusing like a few of them like the, i think the data structure you need to have more than one card and i wasn't just exactly sure why it might be a coding thing that i'm just not like really wrapping my head around um and then of course what are the ones the memory flip up on one i liked uh, it, it, the, uh, coder poker match. I talked about that one already. And, uh, the team league. What was the one I was looking at that I was really having a good time with? Cobble the code. Yeah, that's, that's the, that's, that's, that's my favorite one. That's basically what you would call the, uh, 
the Scrabble one because there's just so much craziness going on. You can play with many pl more players and the map just gets huge. I went and took a picture of it just because it looks really cool. And I couldn't believe all the different strategy involved with this and then starting to think about how I could incorporate this into my own type of game or even utilize the cards to make games that are uh, in basic in a sense with this in addition adding different things to it, right? Uh, if you like creating your own stuff, if you enjoy the basic games that are included in this one along with the fact that they have kind of been incorporated into something new and interesting you're going to enjoy this kind of game but if you're not a big fan of uh the the i guess the more modern uh removed artwork style then you might not like it so right now for me i'm right in the middle with it i really really do like certain games in this i've been playing i played them over and over again especially the scrabble one but the more basic ones i'm kind of like and eh, i don't care much for the, the memory matchup when it's okay but i like the progression of how it increased uh the different complexities and difficulty. Overall, Minecraft is definitely worth taking a look at. Go ahead and check it out in the description below if it seems like something that you'd be interested in. Hi right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out our other videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, comment, and all this help would be greatly appreciate it. Like, subscribe, comment, as well as check out the game Minecraft, a game of coding complexities and mini games, as well as, I guess, incorporating your own games to the style. Uh, I'm interested to see what they do with it and what it's going to look like and if there's going to be more games or, or, or what it is on the Kickstarter, but you can go ahead and take a look in the description when it's out. Also, go ahead and check out everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway to get two great sites, as well as my own unfilteredgamer.com. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I look forward to coding with you guys next time.